Hello everyone, I am Luca, chef and owner of Ristorante Corbeone in Port San Lucio. Hello to everyone. Today is March 19th and in Italy we celebrate St. Joseph's Day, San Giuseppe. Uh, it's also the um, Italian Father's Day in the Italian tradition. So happy Italian Father's Day to all dads and Happy St. Joseph's Day to everyone whose name is Joseph. By the way, not many of you know this. My middle name is Joseph, Giuseppe. I was actually born Giuseppe before I changed my name when I became an American citizen and I added Luca to it and Giuseppe became my middle name. But being born, raised in Italy, people still know me by the name Giuseppe. So, happy St. Joseph's Day. It is a tradition in Italy to make the zeppole di San Giuseppe. Uh, the zeppole is um, a very ancient uh, pastry, like everything in Italy. Uh, it goes back to the ancient Romans. They are the ones who actually uh, invented, discovered uh, this pastry. Um, it is very peculiar and interesting to know a little bit of history. It, the Romans used to celebrate during the month of March, the Ides of March, which were festivities and celebration in, to honor the deities of the Roman, the ancient Roman uh, culture. Um, on this particular occurrence, they celebrated around the 17th to 19th of March, during the Ides of March, they celebrated uh, the festivity of Liberalia, which, if you're familiar with the quinceanera in the Spanish culture, it signified the passage of teen males into adulthood. But it was also a way to honor, on those two days, 17th, 18th, and 19th of March, the, uh, um, the gods uh, Bacchus and Selenius. Uh, and therefore, they celebrate the Liberalia festivity to signify the passage of the males, uh, the teen males into adulthood by offering them uh, wine, and obviously the wine and Bacchus in, in, in the ancient Roman tradition go hand in hand, and he was the god of the wine and also gave them um, fried, deep fried uh, pastry named Serpules, which is a Latin name for snake. And that was named this way due to the shape that they gave this uh, pastry that was literally like rounded and kind of like layered and rounded on, on to themselves. We'll show them when we're going to make it. So I want to show you today how to make the Zeppoli de San Giuseppe, which we are going to have uh, as a special tonight for dinner. So if you're planning to come into our restaurant for dinner uh, tonight on Saturday, March 19th, uh, we will have the Zeppoli de San Giuseppe on special and I will show you because we do everything homemade here uh, I will show you how to make them step by step before we make the pastry we uh, are going to make the custard or la crema pasticcera in Italy. Um, because it needs to cool down it needs to uh, uh, thicken up set firm up and it needs to stay in the cooler or refrigerator if you're making this home for at least, at least uh, two hours. So we're going to show you how to make the crema pasticcera. The ingredients for the crema pasticcera are, and by the way, I will use um, decimal okay, system because it's a much more precise system. Um, I did not invent it. Um, that's the way it is. You can ask the pastry chefs out there in the world and uh, they will tell you that using the decimal system is much better for uh, measuring ingredients, especially when it comes to baking where you have to have a very precise uh, measurement of all the ingredients. 
so here we are 650 milliliters of milk I have six egg yolks 150 milligrams of granulated sugar 32 grams of cornstarch I have some lemon peel and some vanilla extract or if you are lucky enough to um, have the uh, vanilla bean you can also use that so in a small pan we uh, turn the heat on to a medium high we're going to put our milk and we're going to let that come to a boil in the meantime we're going to put the sugar into our eggs and half of the starch and we'll start combining these ingredients So we're going to combine the ingredients and whisk it until it has a pale color and obviously all the starch and the sugar are somewhat not entirely dissolved but fully integrated into this egg sugar starch mixture. That's pretty much it. Now that the milk is coming to slowly to a boil, we are going to put our lemon peel and then we'll give it that uh, lemony flavor to our um, custard. And we are going to slowly bring that to a boil. We're just gonna wait a few minutes and then we'll be right back. As you can see now that the milk is coming to a boil, a first boil, you don't want this to boil the whole way to be a hard uh, boil. I'm going to take the lemon peel out. Reason being, I don't want to make this too lemony and then it will also give us some bitterness to the custard. So we're going to take this out and we're going to discard it. Um, I'm going to take this off the fire and I'm going to slowly mix a little bit of this into the egg. So we distemper the eggs and we are going to prevent the cooking process which it's not nice to the taste because you don't want to taste a cooked egg. It would taste more like a frittata than a custard. So we're going to slowly do that. This is also the time to add the other half of the uh, cornstarch. The reason why I did not add all at once is because I didn't want it to, um, I, I wanted to slowly dissolve in the liquid instead of curling and obviously the phone rings because it's almost like you know people can telepathically say tell that I am making such a delicacy today and therefore they're calling for reservations but that's okay I will uh, let that go to a uh, voicemail and I'll call them back later because I cannot leave this and then we're going to slowly add the rest of the milk and stir
very well. I'm going to put the mixture back into the pot and we're going to put it on the fire again. This time we want it medium, medium heat and we're going to stir continuously for all the time that it takes until it thickens up and so we're just going to stir continuously and we'll see you back in a few minutes okay it's been about two minutes it doesn't really take long uh, as you can see it's already starting to thicken up this is the time when I put the uh, vanilla extract into my custard and this is about, I would say, maybe uh, almost a teaspoon, almost a tablespoon, but I would probably put like half of that. Uh, I don't want it to, the vanilla to overpower the custard. I want it to be very delicate. And also the reason why I, myself, put it at the end is because I do want the vanilla extract to cook for the entire length time that it takes for the custard to thicken up because then it would leave a bitter the longer it cooks then it would leave a bitter uh, aftertaste and I don't want that either so as you can see it's nice and smooth and this is done I don't want to overcook it because again I don't want to give it that strong egg cooked egg flavor so as you can see this is our custard right here it's perfectly done nice and smooth the way it should be I'm going to transfer the content of this pan into a clean bowl smells so good and there we go there's just a little piece here that I want to take out that is like from the bottom of the pan and here's our custard what we're going to do now, we're going to put some film on top so that it doesn't the custard doesn't make the film on, on, on top when it dries out it, it, drives me crazy and then it doesn't taste good and here's the phone that keeps on ringing but guess what we're almost ready to answer that phone because this one needs to now stay in the cooler or the refrigerator if you do this at home obviously at least a couple hours uh, it's going to uh, set it's going to uh, firm up and that is going to make our zeppole uh, garnish uh, much more uh, precise and, and better to handle. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator. The next we're gonna make the pat a choux, which is the pastry dough that we used to make that we used to make the uh, zeppole. So I'll see you in a few minutes. So now that our custard is in the refrigerator cooling for another uh, couple hours, we are going to make the choux. Choux is a pastry dough that is incidentally used to make beignet uh, for the profiteroles and other pastry. It's very simple to make, however, in order to obtain the right structure and texture, there's um, 
there's a few little things that you need to pay attention to, uh, especially the quantity of the eggs. Whereas I can give you, and by the way, I'm making about 12 to 14 uh, Zeppelin today. Um, that's the, the amount of custard and, 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 and the quantity of the shoe uh, pastry dough that I that I am giving you. So this is for about 12 to 14. It depends on how big you make it. We're gonna we're gonna explain that process as well. Uh, so, like I was saying, whereas I can give you a recipe for uh, the dough, when it comes to the eggs, I will tell you that I will probably take anywhere between four and six whole eggs. Uh, not just the yolks, the whole eggs. And that is because obviously it depends on the size of the egg that you use, it depends on the type of flour that you use, it depends on the amount of moisture in the air, there's just too many factors. So you're going to have to look at the, um, at the dough and make sure that it has the right consistency. I, I can show you a trick on how to tell whether or not the dough, the shoe dough, has the right consistency. But for the time being, we're going, we're going to make it. So again, this one here, we want this on, let's say, medium high. Uh, we're going to put our water. I have here 320 milliliters of water. I have 240 grams of butter that I can put all at once. And then I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, which is, I would say, about anywhere between four and five grams, but half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to let our butter dissolve in, uh, melt in the water. going to take a minute or two so just bear with me here for a second obviously it takes time to make things right now trick number one if you have a thermometer you want to make sure that the water is at boiling temperature if it is the boiling temperature is too high, your pastry dough, the pata shoe, will not be will not be right. Same thing if it is too low. So you want it. Uh, I think in Fahrenheit is 212 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees and Celsius. So the butter is already melted. water and butter and the salt have become all one at this point. We are going to wait until it reaches boiling temperature. And it's already starting to uh, bubble up. Okay, so when you see this, this is the right time to uh, put the flour because the first boil is 212 degrees or 100 and uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to put the flour now. I turned the fire off because, like I said, I don't want to uh, exceed that temperature. And I'm going to start stirring the flour until this compound becomes a little ball. Now that it is incorporated, okay, I need to turn this to a medium heat and I'm going to keep stirring. Uh, it's going to help the flour to absorb uh, the water and it also, it's also going to cook the flour a little bit so that you don't have the taste of uncooked uh, flour, which is, I guarantee you, is not pleasant. So we're just going to stir this until all the water is absorbed. So we're 
going to fold it now so that it gives it some structure. And you will do this for about two to three minutes. You will feel when it's right, you can sort of like, uh, there's some kind of film that starts to develop at the bottom here. You don't want that to burn. So make sure that uh, you don't see that discoloration, the brownish discoloration. You don't want the flour to toast in there. Otherwise, uh, it would be better than as well. So it would probably be a good thing to kind of like take it off the, flour, the, 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 the heat and just keep folding. Then bring it back out. Okay, I will say that this is just about ready. See, it's, uh, it's kind of like a custard but it's or if you're a you know a culinary expert it kind of looks like a thick root essentially that's what it is it's a very thick root there you go so we're going to take it off the fire we're going to let this cool down for a minute or two the reason for it being you don't want to start adding the eggs when this is too hot, because otherwise the eggs again will cook and then they will smell and it's not pleasant and the whole thing. So what I do right now is I'm going to put it in my mixing bowl with a paddle attachment. Uh, trick number two, uh, the first one was the boiling temperature. Trick number two, uh, to have a right shoe dough. Um, obviously you want to make sure that it cools down. You don't want to over mix this or mix it at a very high speed. The reason being is the, the dough is made this way without any rising agent because the egg that we're going to incorporate into the flour butter compound here is the raising agent. It's the steam that it creates um, internally that makes the dough puff up and, um, and rise to make the nice puff pastry that we're going to need for our zeppelin. So you don't want to over mix it or mix it at a high speed because that would develop the gluten protein that's in the flour and you don't want to do that. You don't want the gluten to develop so that, uh, because the gluten makes the dough harder, uh, it doesn't stretch as much, and if the gluten develops, which is something that you would need for pizza dough or bread dough, uh, then you would definitely need yeast uh, or any uh, rising agent. So we're not gonna do that. We're simply gonna put into our mixing bowl and kind of like stretch it a little bit in the bowl so that there's heat transfer between the cold bowl and the hot compound here. And it's going to cool down. We're just gonna let it sit here for another minute or so uh, before we start incorporating the eggs in the meantime. It's still hot, so we're just gonna let it cool down. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to prepare my eggs. And again, I'm going to start with four. I know for sure that I'm gonna need four, uh, but possibly five or maybe even six. I would not imagine at this point that I would need more than five eggs. These are uh, medium to large size eggs and I think that five is gonna be the right amount but trick number three you want to make sure that you add the eggs one at a time for two reasons the egg needs to be fully incorporated with the uh, dough with the compound that we just made here 
And also you want to be able to control the texture and the structure so that you get the perfect uh, mix. So, yeah, this needs another minute. We'll, we'll get there and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back and we'll start incorporating the eggs into our dough. And we're back, it's been a few minutes. In the meantime, we uh, baked some bread here for tonight's service. Uh, this is the uh, dough as we uh, let it cool down. Um, just a little, another trick here. So you see the temperature is about 112 degrees all the way through. A little less than that and this is uh, the temperature that you want this compound to be at you don't want it to exceed uh, 120 really because that's when the eggs is going to start cooking and then it's going to smell so it's ready to be incorporated with the eggs we're just going to put it into our mixer here we're going to start to add the eggs one by one and again the speed has to be as low as I have it here set on uh, two on this machine. Obviously every machine is different, but we're going to start incorporating the eggs one by one. There's one. And we're not gonna add the other egg until this is fully incorporated. So it's going to take a minute or two. And at times it will seem like this uh, compound is going to lump up and, and be very, uh, thick but you know just be patient with it because it's going to come together as you can see the first egg has already been incorporated it's time to put the second one and just let the mixer here work its magic obviously if you don't have a mixer you can always do this by hand um, to require some time and uh, you're gonna take breaks because your elbow is gonna start hurting. Olio di gomito, we call that in Italian. Okay, third egg. Very slowly going to incorporate the egg. You don't want the gluten to develop. Fourth. And here's the fifth. This should probably be okay, but again, you know, we won't know until all the eggs have been incorporated. Okay, I'm gonna stop it for a second. I'm gonna check. Okay, it's almost, almost there. I definitely need to incorporate one more egg. So we'll do just that. Let me slow it down a little bit.
and this is our sixth. Yeah, that's definitely it. It's coming together. And if you notice that it sticks to the borders, all you have to do is just uh, lift it. And we're going to scrape that with a spatula so that the whole thing gets mixed in. Okay, it's incorporated. And to me it has just about the right consistency. As a matter of fact, I would almost go as far as saying that this needs yet one more egg. So now I'm at seven. And that's why I told you earlier, you cannot really make an exact recipe even though I gave you the exact recipe for the amount of uh, zeppelin that I was going to make because it all depends about so many factors you know like the humidity in the air the, the, the humidity that is present in the flour and the, the, the size of the eggs and whatnot so you're just gonna have to feel it uh, this one here is a little bit too thick so we're going to add one more egg I will be right back And there you go. That's good. It looks like custard, but it's slightly thicker than custard. So what we're gonna do is we're going to This is how it is. See, uh, when the this is how you'll know, okay? It doesn't come down. Otherwise, it will be too runny. Then it will collapse into itself. If it is way too thick, then it's not gonna cook. But this is right. Now, this is where I deviate from the original recipe. What I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to add a little bit of marsala. It is something that Neapolitans uh, do, but in Sicily also when we make the Zeppelin Santo but we have just a touch of marsala. This is what we use here. It's a Sicilian Marsala.
That's a tablespoon. You don't want more than that. We just gonna mix it. Mmm, smell that masala. So good. Ready. We're just gonna let it sit for a minute and then we're going to make our zeppelin. So I think we're ready. We start assembling here our zeppelin. So this one here is uh, had a couple minutes, you know, of uh, me stirring just to combine the marsala there, and uh, it is the right consistency. Uh, you know, again, see, this is what you what you want. Like when you lift it up, it should form. It's almost like a triangle. Okay, right there but it shouldn't fall off that's how you know it's the right consistency okay anything less than that throw it out start again all right we're going to prepare our baking i'm gonna put a couple drops of water here and just spread it And then we're going to put some paper. So the water at the bottom is going to make the paper stick and also going to prevent the paper itself from burning. We need a sucker push pastry bag. We're gonna fold it, we're gonna start putting our shoe, not the shoe, the shoe, like the shoe, pastry dough. Uh, this one here, I think it's, uh, it should be an eight millimeter uh, tool here. Let's see, this is what it looks like. I think it's either an eight or 10, it looks like an eight to me, but any, anything, uh, between 8 and 10 millimeters should be the one that you want to use. We're going to start filling the pastry bag. Like I said earlier, uh, it comes almost certainly uh, from the Latin word serpule, which means snakes. And that's because of the way that it is laid down, which is like this, in the middle, and then just like a snake, you start layering this. There you go. It looks like a snake, and that's why of the name. The other possibility is that the name derives from the Neapolitan uh, street fryer. Um, back, I don't know, something like the early 1800, uh, there was this guy named in the Neapolitan dialect, Zio Paolo, which means Uncle Paul. And therefore, Tio Paolo sort of like self proclaimed to have invented the Zeppelin. 
and that's a possibility for why the name Zeppelin but I'm pretty sure it's because of the Latin snake in the meantime I forgot to tell you that I have preheated the oven to 400 degrees ventilated for convection whichever way you want to call it This is fun, isn't it? Okay, so that's the first batch. I have more in here. So we're gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees uh, for about 20 to 25 minutes, you know, it, it, it depends. You will see this should now rise and then we'll to check. So 20 to 25 minutes in the oven, ventilated, it goes. I'll see you. Okay, folks, so I'm just about 10 minutes into it and I wanted to show you uh, the inside. As you can see, they're starting to puff up and they have 10 more minutes to go. They will uh, puff up even more. And then before we're going to get our final uh, product here. So I'll see you in another 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes, there's our buzzer, went off, and we are going to check and see what we got here. Oh, wow, look at that. See, they're nice and puffed up, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave them in the oven, okay? We're going to shut the oven off because we don't want to continue cooking this, but we are just going to close the oven and leave it a little bit so that there's some air coming there's an air exchange okay that's going to prevent our zeppole to collapse until uh, the uh, inside is fully cooked and fully and has fully stabilized so you see there's like all these little tricks and things that I'm telling you but I assure it's and it takes time to make these zeppole it's not an easy thing it's not like you fry the dough Ah, by the way, there's two ways of making them. Okay, one is baking them, and one is frying them. Me, personally, I prefer to bake them. Why? Because it's healthier. And I'm all about healthy food. So, instead of just dipping them in the oil, and then it absorbs the oil, and it's just, you know, cholesterol that arises, and all kinds of problems, then you gotta go to the doctor, so don't do it. Just bake them. It's much lighter, fluffier, uh, healthier, as healthy as, as you know something where we just use 14 or 15 eggs is. But I, I assure you, it, it's going to be worth the time that you spend on making. It's not. It's not an easy process. It, it is easy, but it's not. It, it, it's labor intensive. Uh, but the result is just spectacular. Exactly what the sun just said. It's like. So we're going to let this sit with the uh, uh, door semi-closed here or semi-open, whichever you want to see it, uh, for another five minutes. Then we're going to put them in the cooler to cool down a little bit and, uh, you know, so that the, 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 the Zeppelin uh, dough stabilizes itself even more and then we're ready to garnish them and I'm going to show you the uh, finished product. In the meantime, I'm going to make uh, the rest of it and I use all my dough so I'm going to make the rest of it So I'll see you in a little bit So we are ready to assemble the final product Zeppole di San Giuseppe, but before we do that here's our custard which has had 
uh, just about two hours, yeah, it's been two hours in effect. Uh, so it's set and it's ready for use. But before we use it, I want to do something else. I have about half a cup of uh, whipped cream here that we just whipped up real quick. And I'm going to incorporate this into our crema pasticcera. Um, it's going to relax and smooth the custard so that it's not as thick and also it's a little bit more delicate. Uh, this is what you would traditionally call a, in French is a chantilly, okay? So we're going to fold this gently because we don't want the air that's incorporated into the whipped cream to the little bubbles to burst. So we're just gonna fold bottom up this way until it's incorporated. That's our creme chantilly. Merci beaucoup. That's just about right. So, we're going to take one of uh, our puff pastry here. What we're going to do is I'm going to cut it right in the middle. You don't have to, but I like to. But we're going to cut it right in the middle because I want to show you. Look how light this is. You know, look how light. It really is like holding a feather. So we're going to assemble the Zeppelin. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Chantilly into our bag. Yeah, a little bit more. Why not? There you go. We're just gonna leave it here for a second. We're going to put the bottom here. I'll let all the air out. Got to put the pin inside. And then we're going to put the cap center. There you go. And then we're gonna garnish it. With what? With Amarena Cherry. Amarena Cherry. You can use Maraschino Cherry if you want, but if you wanna go the extra mile and make it original, you're gonna use the Amarena Cherry. And this is how you're going to dab it. And then what you're gonna do is you are going to put sugar lots of it because i like sugar a little bit on the plate for decoration and ladies and gentlemen this is the zeppole di san giuseppe we are going to have this as a special dessert obviously since you've seen me making it you know that it's something that we make here in house and uh and that's it and i'm sure that it tastes delicious and i just cannot wait to eat it as a matter of fact uh can i uh, love it love it oh oh i'm gonna say goodbye to you guys this is just too good i cannot pass ah uh, later